Hello everyone and welcome to today's travel webcast webinar, German Cities to Have on Your Bucket List in 2017. Presenting for us today is Antje Spletstosser, Director of the German National Tourist Office, Janet Gorecki, Senior Sales Manager and Commercial Coordinator for Condor, and Jasmine Bischoff, Marketing Manager for Frankfurt Tourism. Hi Antje, are you there? Hi, yes, I'm here. Hello everyone and guten Tag. All right, so, excellent. Um, now, before we get started, I'd just like to let the viewers know that if you guys have any questions during the webinar, just type your questions into the Q&A box found in your Zoom toolbar, and those questions will be answered after all three presenters have spoken. Okay, Anja, if you'd like to go ahead and share your screen, you can start whenever you're ready. Okay, I'm just about to share. There we go. Perfect. Well, ein wunderschönen guten Nachmittag, everyone, which means a wonderful, lovely good afternoon. And um, first of all, Daniel, thank you very much for the introduction and also all of our partners for being um, with us this afternoon. Uh, but most importantly, to all of you who hopefully had already um, their lunch break and are not hungry while they're listening to our um, beautiful Germany presentation. And I know that some of you have signed up for the four consecutive webinars. So some of um, what I will be telling you in the beginning, um, you have heard in the previous webinar. However, the good news is it will definitely make you a Germany specialist of our um, facts and figures. So let me right, um, jump into them right away. Um, Germany is this bright, beautiful, lovely country right in the middle of Europe, as you can see here in the map. And it fits, in fact, 27 times into Canada, which is quite impressive. And the reason why I'm saying that is you have heard probably of so many cities in Germany already, Munich, Berlin, Frankfurt, Dresden, Leipzig, Rotenburg of the Tauber, all of these cities. And they're very, very easy um, within reach. And in Germany, you can be sure that your clients will never travel longer than yeah, even an hour and they're already in the next perfect destination. So that, that definitely makes Germany one of the um, great destinations to travel to. It's all easy within reach. And we are also, if you look at the map to the left-hand side, we are similar structure to Canada. Um, while in Canada, we do have the provinces. In Germany, we have 16 federal states. As you can see, those are the colorful ones. And you also see up north, <coughs> we are surrounded by the North Sea as well as the Baltic Sea. And wherever there is water, there are also some islands. And we have 350 islands in total in Germany, which many, many people don't know and have not heard about. So if you are ever in, in Germany, make sure to check out one of our islands. They're quite beautiful and spectacular as well. Around the map, you can see some, grau some gray parts. Um, those are countries that Germany is bordering to. And in fact, we are bordering to nine countries. So it makes us very um, basically an easy getaway um, to travel even within Europe. Now, one of the good questions is, that's all good. How do we even get there? Um, first of all, we have three carriers who serve Germany with direct flights right now. One of them is with us today. So right now we have Lufthansa um, as well as Air Canada. And who's with us today is um, Janet from Condor, Condor Airlines. Um, definitely an airline to keep out or basically to keep in mind. Janet will tell you more shortly. And brand new as of summer this year, we'll have the first um, Canada ever direct flight between Toronto and Berlin, uh, which is served by Air Canada Rouge four times weekly quite excited about that as well. Now, once you made it to Germany, it's very easy to get around within our country. Um, of course, we have several airports. What most people do enjoy, though, if they're traveling on their own, is to take advantage of our German rail system. Our train system is quite um, popular. Why? Because it's very um, efficient. It's really nice trains, very punctual. And the good news is, even when you arrive at the airport, such as, for example, in Munich and Frankfurt, um, the train station is directly connected to the airport, so you literally only go down two floors, and then you have reached already the, the platform where the train departs from, and it's very easy to get to your next destination in Germany. Car rentals, also one of the options, and we know that, in fact, a lot of Canadians love renting one of our great, great German car brands, such as a BMW, a Porsche, a Mercedes, and then they love trying their gas pedal on our Autobahn. Autobahn is the German word for highway, and in fact, more than 60% of our Autobahn is still without speed limit. So there you can see, you can try the car, and many, many um, Canadians love doing that. Um, of course, we also have many rivers that you have heard about, um, the Rhine, the Danube, the Elbe, 
and uh, you can travel the country by boat. River cruises have become quite a yeah, popular product for Canadians, so that of course is an option as well. I just would like to remind you why it is so great to travel to Germany. First of all, it's affordable. Um, we as the GNTO always compare us with other major European cities, and um, if you um, just take our capital, which is Berlin, and compare it to Milan, to Rome, to Paris, we always come out the cheapest if you look at four-star hotel um, rate prices. Um, but it's also affordable in terms of any attractions. I mean, if you look at Canada, right, you pay uh, for the Toronto Zoo, 24, CN Tower, you go up, it's 30, Growth Mountain, it's 40, 50. Those are quite like expensive prices, especially when you um, travel as a family. In Germany, it's very easy to get around, and maybe we will hear something later on from Jasmine regarding some museum cards. Um, so it's definitely very affordable. English is widely spoken, which makes it easy to travel within the country. We learn English as of grade one, so we're happy to help any travelers with um, directions or any recommendations they may need. Germany has a great, great infrastructure, what I've just pointed out, so it makes it really easy to travel um, within Germany. And the good news is, yes, I have to say it over and over again, Germans are friendly and fun. And um, we really, we are very welcoming and open society. And hopefully you or your clients get the chance to sit on one of the beer benches with us and say prost with a lovely um, beer. We have also been voted number one country last year at the Economic um, Forum in Davos, which of course makes us, makes us very proud as a country, but it also shows that we are a great country to travel to. Now, um, the topic of this webinar is German cities you have to have on your bucket list. And we have decided to have two different sections. The first one, I would like to present the top three German cities for Canadians for you. And um, those are based on the numbers that we record. So the following next three cities are the ones that we record the most overnights from Canada. The first one is Berlin, followed by Munich. And then, of course, the beautiful city of Frankfurt, which we have just me on the phone, who will tell you more about it later on. And then after I introduce those top three cities to you, we're going to the next top three cities to watch out for in 2017 because some events will take place in those cities, but I will get to that shortly. Let's start with the first city, which is the city of Berlin, also our capital city. Of course, we have the most um, inhabitants there as well, 3.5 million. And Berlin is known to be a very international city, um, very trendy, artsy, creative. Here you can see the beautiful Brandenburg Gate, which has not only become the landmark of Berlin, but also of the entire country. And uh, for some of you who may be from Toronto, they may feel at home because Berlin also has a TV tower. But uh, don't be fooled, it's only half as high as the CN Tower, but it also has a restaurant on top um, where you can basically overlook the city. They have more than 180 museums, so that's quite a significant number. And this one that you can see on the picture here is the beautiful Museum Island, which is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And it actually has five museums on that island. And you see the love, the, the mix that I love about Germany is this. You have these beautiful architectural things in front of you, but then you have like some outdoor patio space. As you can see, they're sitting on the kind of beach sand. So it's a very nice combination that you will get in Germany. Now, Berlin is very, very famous for the history, especially between the East and West. Germany was once divided, a once divided country, but not only the country itself, also the city of Berlin was directly divided um, with a wall. And um, this, what you can see here, is called the East Side Gallery. It's the longest piece of the still standing wall in Berlin, but you can also take underground tunnels with a checkpoint Charlie, go on an old East, um, yeah, Eastern car that we used to have called Trabant, and you can drive around in that car and explore the city based on the East and West history. But uh, Berlin is also famous for street food, lots of street foods that they have to offer. What you can see in the picture is the um, so-called curry sausage. It's a very, very yummy sausage, a little bit spicy. <clears throat> and in fact, they love it so much that they even have devoted an entire museum to it. So yes, that's right. Uh, in Berlin, you get the curry sausage museum. Something to watch out for in 2017 is the International Gardening Exhibition. 
Um, that exhibition takes place every 10 years. This year, again, it will be in Berlin. And the good news is you don't only see these beautiful um, like garden landscape options, but they also teach you, you know, whatever grows in your garden, what can you actually do with it? Can you make cosmetics out of it? Can you use it as ingredients for your kitchen and recipes? So I think it's a quite hands-on exhibition. And they've also installed a cable car to take you through the fairground. The next city I would like to talk about is Munich, which is in the very south of Germany in the state of Bavaria. And um, it's a beautiful city in terms of, of course, um, the buildings, as you can see, overlooking the skyline close to the Alps. But it's also known to be a city of tradition. So here you will see a lot of lederhosen and, and dirndl and beer and a typical white sausage. But it also has a lot of modern aspects to it. Um, this, for example, is the BMW world, where you can learn how BMWs are assembled. They have great children program. Um, so if you want to drop off your children and go around that exhibition, um, it's a lot of fun to do so. Um, they also have a little river going through the city. Um, this one is the Eisbach, and it's right downtown. So you can just walk when you're in the city, walk by. It's pretty spectacular to stand at the bridge and watch it. Um, people are actually surfing on this one wave, and they surf it um, all year round. Um, Munich is also the host of the um, Oktoberfest, which attracts 6 million people every, every year. And uh, yeah, you definitely... <laughs> have to have eaten before you go there because there will be a lot of beer consumed. That being said, um, leads us to the next city, which is Frankfurt and the beautiful state of Hesse. And of course, I don't want to tell you too much because Jasmine will be um, doing that more in detail later on. But I can only tell you most people and most of your clients will go to Frankfurt because the majority of the direct flights are going into the city. And it's really, really a missed opportunity if, if you don't let them stay at least one night or two nights because you see Frankfurt has the great mix between you have a beautiful skyline mixed with old quarters, old timbered houses, beautiful museums along the river. On the river, you have little boats where you can go and um, have a meal, drink a beer. But again, just mean we'll be definitely doing a better job and telling you some of that. And that um, was already the top three cities for Canadians where we, record, where we record the most overnights. Now, let me go into the top three German cities that you might watch out for in 2017. One of them is also in the state of Hesse, the city Kassel. And um, Kassel only has 200,000 inhabitants. And you might think, hmm, why should I go there? It's relatively small. Well, let me tell you, there are some great things to see and do. First of all, there are Brothers Grimm, and you may have heard of them because they were great storytellers and story collectors. And actually, they are the ones who um, you probably have heard of, the Little Red Riding Hood, Snow White, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty. You think those are all fairy tales from your childhood? Don't be fooled. Those um, places actually do exist in Germany. So we do have the Sleeping Beauty Castle and so on. You can travel around it. But what you can learn in Kassel is there is a museum devoted to the Brothers Grimm where you learn everything about those fairy tales. It's also, of course, beautiful in terms of nature with um, uh, this beautiful park here, long waterfall cascade. But what it's really known for this year will be the Documenta. Documenta is an art exhibition that takes place there every five years. Now, some people also call it a provocative museum of 100 days. Why? <laughs> you can probably see in the picture. A lot of the art um, is from world's um, wide artists, obviously. But they also have a lot of installation outdoors. So this is an ice axe from the 70s. And of course, you can still see it in the city of Kassel because those exhibits will be never taken down. So if you travel through Kassel, it's, it's, it's really like you go through an outdoor art museum, if you will. So it's quite spectacular and it will take place again this year from June till September and uh, world famous people travel there in order to witness that. Um, last time, for example, one of the guests was Brad Pitt. So even if you don't want to see the documenta, you might want to see Brad Pitt in Kassel. Um, very great uh, place to visit. The next city I would like to talk about is the city of Düsseldorf in the state of North Rhine-Westphalia. Uh, that state, by the way, is the most heavy populated state in Germany. And Düsseldorf is known to be a fashion city. Um, as you can see, it's also great in terms of architecture. This is the Media Harbor, and it's located right on the River Rhine. We also have an um, event that is called Rhine in Flames, what you can witness here on that picture. All boats gather together on the Rhine, and there is a spectacular firework. Why is that city important in 2017? Well, everyone who is a bike fan, the Grand Depart of the Tour de France will take place over three days in the city of Düsseldorf. And of course, it will be accompanied by all different kinds of bike workshops, bike races, bike exhibitions, 
everything related to the bikes. It will take place from 10, June 29th to July 2nd. And the last city I would like to put on your mind again for 2017 is the city of Cologne. Why not only the cathedral that you can see right in the middle of the picture um, is important and what many people like about the city. It also has beautiful old quarters, um, very well known for the beer. Here you can see um, it's a certain, every region in Germany has different beer and they also serve it in a very different style. So this one, for example, is the so-called Kölsch beer and they serve it in a very long, narrow glass of 200 milliliters. And one advice that I can give you, if you ever go into a brew house in Cologne and you finish with your beer, you have to put your coaster on top of the beer, because if you don't do that, it's basically understood that you would like to continue drinking and they will keep on serving, keep on serving, keep on serving. So that just as a little advice, but the beer is very yummy. Why is Cologne, um, oh yeah, another thing that happens in Cologne and we're actually right in the, in the middle of the season, is Carnival, and Carnival is also referred to in Germany as the fifth season. Why? You can see here, everyone gets dressed up, it's similar to what we celebrate here with Halloween, just that people in Germany do that for six days in a row. And in fact, it starts on the Thursday before Ash Wednesday, and um, everyone in the city is literally has lost their mind, you might get the impression. So people who do not like Carnival, they're usually on vacation. Everyone else is definitely in one boat and celebrating until the late hours of the night. And it definitely highlights in the Rose Monday Parade, which was yesterday, where they have huge big wagons with beautiful figures on top. And then they throw candy from those wagons. So it's a fun time to be in Germany for. Um, definitely check it out if you ever happen to be there. Why is it important for 2017? Well, as dear Canadians, you should be all ice hockey fans since this is the national sport of this country. And the Ice Hockey World Cup will take place this year jointly in Cologne and Paris. Now the Canadian team will play under Group B. Most of their games will be in Paris, but the good news is all of the important games for Canada, meaning the quarters, the semis, the finals, they will all take place in the beautiful city of Cologne. So as you can see, that was um, a quick ride uh, through some of the cities that are uh, not only generally important, but also in 2017. That being said, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out at any time. That's what we're here for. And I'm very excited to be learning more about um, Frankfurt after Janet has told us a little bit about how Condor will take you very pleasantly and conveniently to Germany. Thank you for your attention, everyone. All right, Janet, if you'd like to go ahead and take over. Okay, we can see your screen now. I'm share, okay. Oh, here it is. Okay, very good. Yeah, we can see it opening now. Okay, sorry. No worries. Okay. All right. Can you see it now? Yeah, definitely. We can see your slides. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Anja, for the introduction. And every time I, I learn something different about, about Germany, it was great with the German bucket list cities. So now I would like to give a um, presentation about the Thomas Cook Group Airlines to maybe inform some of the agents about Condor in case they don't know. So a little background of Condor, we've been um, in business for 60 years, really started as a charter air a, a carrier um, under Lufthansa. Lufthansa has owned us for many years. We've also been in, in Canada for many years, first as, a, as under Lufthansa, then as a charter. But several years ago, we were, um, Lufthansa bought the remaining stock from, and, uh, sold it to Thomas Cook. And so now we're under the umbrella of the Thomas Cook Airlines Group. So we're still a separate identity. There's Thomas Cook UK, Belgium, Scandinavia, and Condor. The only thing we all have in common is on our, on our tail, the sunny heart. So um, new what we've done within the past few years is all our aircraft have been refurbished with new cabin interior. 
and we've uh, added destinations. We're expanding in North America. We have five Canadian destinations, but now 12 in the U.S. Our aircraft that we fly long haul to Canada is a 767. It has 18 or 30 cla uh, business class seats, 35 premium economy seats. The configuration is two, three, and two. Um, further in the presentation, I have a more detailed um, view of the aircraft. Condor is well known in, in Germany and people that have traveled on us are, are happy with the product, but we're, we're trying to get more well-known in Canada. Right now, there's a lot of competition, but we want everyone to know that we've been voted uh, most popular airline. We have a good website. We're known also for best service and customer provider, and also um, recently one of the best employers in Germany. Our main hubs going to Germany are Frankfurt and Munich. So Frankfurt, as Antje mentioned, it's a very good connection destination, not only for flights, but also for the train. Um, it's the same terminal, so from coming off the long haul Condor flight, you can go all the way downstairs with, with your bags and get onto the, to the, uh, the high, high speed rail or just the train. Also, the Travel agents are able to book the train through their DDS system all on the same ticket. What also just some of the highlights of the Frankfurt Airport, I like that there's still baggage storage. I mean, there's great restaurants, duty free. Another destination that Condor is starting to travel to and establish as a hub is Munich. From Canada, Halifax flies to Munich now once a week. We're expanding more and more. We'll probably see more destinations there in the future. But it's also a good airline for uh, connections to Eastern or Southern Europe, India, and the Middle East, five-star airport, also great restaurants, uh, duty-free, and even there's an airport shuttle to the Alps. Here's an overview of all our destinations. So just to highlight Canada, we'll have Toronto four times a week, beginning 3rd of May. Halifax, three times a week to Frankfurt, once to Munich, also beginning of May. Vancouver, five times a week, beginning in May. Calgary will begin in July, three times a week. And then Whitehorse Canada, which is just a once a week destination, mostly for uh, inbound tour operators. But it also, we do sell tickets uh, since we're scheduled service out of Whitehorse to Frankfurt and beyond. Just to highlight this year in North America, our new destinations, Pittsburgh, New Orleans, and San Diego. So this is just an overview of our worldwide destinations. You can see Condor is not just in North America, we're also in South America, very popular uh, in the Caribbean region, Middle America, and with Frankfurt, Munich, and out of the Caribbean, some of our flights go directly to uh, Vienna. This is to inform you of all of our interline partners. So in Canada, WestJet is a big partner of Condor, meaning that all on, this, on the same ticket, you can book a WestJet, WestJet flight to connect to our long haul destinations and then over to, to Europe. So this just gives you an, an idea of how many interline partners we actually have. So in addition to to Lufthansa, we have a Swiss, Austrian, Croatian Airlines, Scandinavian Airlines. So all of these um, fares in the GDS system are published fares and can be ticketed on Condor 881 ticket stop. So this is the configuration of our um, 767 aircraft. So you can see we have two, three, and two in econ uh, premium economy and economy class, and then in business class, two, two, and two.
business class. So this is the seat pitch is 60 inches, and it has almost full flat uh, uh, reclining seats to 170 degrees. You have your own personal uh, light, and the, the seat back back screens are 15 inches, and a USB port at each seat. The selection of, uh, you have a selection of five course meal, um, also beverages, a complimentary cocktails. There's uh, the baggage allowance, important, is two pieces at 32 kilos each piece, and also two carry-ons at 12 kilos each piece. In business class booking also includes sports equipment up to 30 kilos, and you have a separate check-in at most destinations and access to lounges in Frankfurt uh, and then some of our destinations also in Canada. It varies from year to year, unfortunately, depending on our, our handling agent. Premium economy, so this was the two, three, and two configuration with a seat pitch 35 to 36 inches, also newly designed seats with a movable headrest and adjustable footrest with a nine inch seat back screen for the in-flight entertainment. In premium, the premium menus are included or alternatively a special meal if uh, requested. There's also the baggage allowance is one piece at 32 kilos and a hand luggage at 10 kilos. Seat reservation is included with a premium economy booking. And what we've noticed and heard feedback from the travel agents, many of our customers that travel from Canada to Europe going on a, a river cruise prefer premium economy because they're allowed their one, one baggage and their one carry-on. And all the ancillaries are included in, in the fare. So if you take if you do a la carte for an economy, then when you add up the price, it's almost the same as premium. So for a few dollars more, premium economy has been uh, very popular with our customers. Our economy class has also been refurbished with two, three, and two configurations. So this is also very favorable in the in the middle with with families or you're not going over three or four people because I've seen some uh, aircraft with five seats in the middle. Uh, we have a seat pitch of 30 to 31 inches, but still everyone has their own in-seat video, a USB port, and a blanket and a pillow. Economy class, we still serve complimentary uh, meals on, on the flight. So you'll get a hot meal and also a cold snack before landing. Baggage allowance is one piece at 23 kilos and one hand carry at six kilos. Premium economy, this is um, a premium economy class, very similar um, to ours from Thomas Cook Airlines. These aircraft uh, only operate in, in the U.S. Uh, very rarely coming uh, to Canada. In-flight entertainment, are, for all aircraft, in-flight entertainment has been upgraded. As I mentioned before, everyone has their in-seat video and extensive choice of, of movies and children's channels. And just as I mentioned before, the ancillary fees. So this is an overview just in for the travel agent's knowledge of seat reservations, uh, what we have for special meals, unaccompanied minor, extra baggage, all these uh, fees, if they're booked before the departure date, you can get a, a little bit uh, a better price. But of course, I need to mention that all of these uh, prices are dynamic and could change periodically uh, because of the exchange rate. So we usually determine our, our fees first with the euro and then we'll do a calculation for either Canadian or US dollar based on that. So 
So just some, some key facts that I would like to, to remember is that we have great through fares to Europe, Middle East, and India. The, the train is bookable and the GDS. We have over 30 connections with Alaska Airlines in the U.S. and over 20 connections with WestJet in Canada. Condor participates in the Lufthansa Miles and More program, so you're able to accrue and use your miles um, with Condor as well. We have great one-way fares if you check out the GDS and um, our group department in Germany. I have the email here, the group and rise in the condor.com would be happy to take any group requests. So I, I thank you again for your attention. Sorry, I'm a little mix up at the beginning. And um, yes, I hope you were able to, to learn a little bit about Condor, our flights from Canada to Germany. Thanks. Yeah, then uh, it's my turn. Um, I'm taking over now. Uh, let me see. I'll let you know when we can see your screen. Okay. And thank you, Janet. Oh, great. Uh, Jasmine, we can see your screen now. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much um, for joining us. For me, it's already almost night. Um, it's it's 7.30 in the evening, but I know for you it's afternoon, so I'm, I'm really glad you're joining all. My name is Yasmin Bischoff, and I'm with the Frankfurt Tourist Board, and um, tonight, or in the afternoon, I would like to tell you a little bit about Frankfurt and um, at about Frankfurt at its best in 2017 and 2018, give you some new and uh, some ideas why it's worth traveling to Frankfurt, not only as a layover. Uh, I start with a map for those of you who don't know too well where Frankfurt is located. Um, as you see on the Germany map, Frankfurt is located quite centrally. Um, and those who haven't been there or don't know that much about it, you all know the airport, of course. Um, it's the biggest hub in Germany. Um, it's the gateway to Europe. Um, and um, it's, it's really great connected to all over the world. So in, in total, we connect to, into about 290 destinations worldwide. And um, especially for Canada, we have about 15 nonstop flights to all major Canadian cities. Um, but of course, we are connected to all major German and European cities and not only by plane, but as well by train or, of course, on the famous highway that uh, Antje mentioned. It's quite easy to rent a car and, um, and to try out the German Autobahn. Um, yeah, the blue cities on the, on the map that you see, um, they are all major or important historical cities in Germany. And uh, why I marked them blue is why, because you can reach them all within one hour from Frankfurt by train, for example. Cologne, you have heard about the famous cathedral, which is UNESCO um, World Heritage. You might have heard about Rüdesheim, um, a very gorgeous little uh, city located at the river Rhine, a romantic Rhine Valley. And Heidelberg, you might have heard because of the romantic castle in Heidelberg with a great view over the Neckar. And Stuttgart, for example, is the gateway to the Black Forest. You can reach all of those cities, as I mentioned, within one hour from Frankfurt. So you can think about of Frankfurt not only as a city break destination, but as well as a starting po a point for manifold daily excursions. Um, I give you a short overview just to show you how small Frankfurt in fact is, even though everybody thinks due to the skyline that Frankfurt is quite a big business city. But in fact, um, everything which is important in Frankfurt lies quite close to each other. Uh, you see the st uh, station district. I should maybe mention as well that you can reach Frankfurt Central Station from the airport within 15 minutes and there are trains every 15 minutes. So it's quite easy to get downtown. You don't have to be worried even if you have a layover of about five to six hours, it's already worth coming downtown and uh, visiting the city for just a short um, view. Um, because of the train station or starting off the train station to get downtown, as you see there, it's like a five to 15 minutes walking distance, depending on where you want to go. And you are at the historic city center, um, at the shopping area, or as well directly at the river mine. 
Frankfurt offers a comprehensive cultural landscape. In total, we have about 60 museums and galleries and as well about 40 theater groups and stages. Um, 25 of the museums form the so-called Frankfurt Museum um, Embankment and 13 of those museums are located directly at the river mine, at the embankments of the river mine and you could do a museum hopping, go from one to, each, um, to the other. Um, Frankfurt has as well an award-winning opera and uh, an English theatre which is quite a big one on the uh, European continent. Our cultural highlights in 2017 and 18 um, are listed here. Um, we have a number of reopenings of museums, of really important museums, like our historical museum, which will be after um, big uh, and extensive renovations and extensions be reopened by the end of 2017. And that will be, be quite an interesting interactive museum um, afterwards. The Jewish Museum will reopen by the end of 2018. And we will get a romantic museum um, right next door to the Goethe House. Very important exhibitions in 2017 and 18 will, for example, be Matisse Bonin or Peter Paul Rubens. You all know him, I'm, I'm sure. Um, and at the Museum of Applied Arts, there will be a big Jill Sander um, exhibition. This is just an, a few, um, a choice of a few um, big exhibitions. Of course, there will be many others which I can't list all here. But if you are interested, I can send you, of course, a full detailed list. Frankfurt offers as well cultural events um, such as the Museum Night, which you might know um, from other German cities as well. And our biggest cultural festival is the Museum Embankment Festival. During that time, all museums are, look, uh, are opened um, throughout the day until late in the night. It's for three days. And there are stands with and stalls with international music, with food from all over the world, with handcrafts from all over the, over the world. It's really a great festival. And you can remember it quite easy. It always takes place on the last weekend of August every year. And the book fair, of course, I don't have to mention that in detail. You all have heard about that, I'm sure. Shopping as well is a topic for, for everybody. Um, the Zeil is one of Germany's biggest shopping streets. Um, on the Frescas, for example, which comes really from the word eating. It's a, it's a very harsh and old word for, for eating. Um, on the Frescas, you will find delicatessens um, from all over the world as well. But of course, you can do tax-free shopping in Frankfurt. And something very special for Frankfurt are the weekly farmer markets. Almost every day of the week you'll find another district which offers a farmer market and on those you of course get regional products but for Frankfurt people for people living in Frankfurt it's not only going there and do some shopping but it's as well a meeting point we meet there we have a glass of apple wine together we eat there you can you can sit down meet friends eat there and um, tourists found that out as well and go there um, very they like going there very well um, as well because it's something very special and you'll really meet people from Frankfurt and everybody talks to everybody. It's a really nice atmosphere. Well, we are an international metropolis, but as well, we are featuring the German Gemütlichkeit. We are um, holding high to our traditions um, and Frankfurt has quite a number of traditions. Um, our biggest and oldest tradition is the Frankfurt apple wine. So you know that Germany is famous for beer and especially Munich and the surrounding area is famous for beer and the Oktoberfest, but Frankfurt is not. We are famous for apple wine which is a little bit can be a little bit compared to cider it's even though it's it's stronger it's um it's more sour and it's very you have to get used to it but once you are used to it it's really a nice drink especially in summertime and with the apple wine together we like to eat handkäse which is a special raw milk cheese and another very special dish which you see on the photo as well is the green sauce it's a sauce um, made from seven herbs coming from our region and usually it's served with eggs and potatoes. 
And the little story behind it is um, I compare our green sauce um, to the Italian pizza, not because of the dish itself, but to the tradition or to the history. Because pizza was once um, a meal or a dish for poor people. Um, you put on the pizza everything, or that was the former tradition, you put on the pizza everything which, was, um, which you had And that was for the green sauce the same. In a time when they didn't have very much, but they had the herbs and because they had cows, they had cream and sour cream and they had eggs, of course, and they had potatoes. So it's quite an easy dish, but it tastes delicious. And of course, you can eat it with schnitzel as well. And then, of course, I don't have to talk about Frankfurt sausages. Everybody knows it. Um, they are quite famous all over the world. But as we are very traditional, um, international as well, and we have about 100 nations living in Frankfurt, um, therefore, of course, we have um, international cuisine from all over the world. You will find restaurants uh, from, from all countries in the world in Frankfurt. And of course, that's just um, um, a mention at the site. Um, we have nine Michelin star restaurants in Frankfurt for those who like it a bit more delicious or nice or elegant. And of course, as we like to celebrate, we have culinary as well, events as well. Um, I will um, especially mention the Apple Wine Festival. Um, we love our apple wine so much that we devoted a full festival to it. It always takes place in August. All of those festivals that you see here are annual festivals. So they take place around the same time every year. Other events and festivals in Frankfurt, the Weltestag, which is our most traditional festival coming from a very long time ago and take, taking place every year on Witzan in the um, city forest. Um, the Ironman Euro European Championship takes place in Frankfurt. We have a Christopher Street Day as many other German cities and of course a Christmas market, which is quite famous and very nice uh, in the old city center. Our Biggest news for the next two years um, is our historic city center, which will be completely restored and uh, reconstructed. Um, it's our Dom Römer quarter located between the cathedral and um, the Dom Römer, uh, Römer Berg, uh, located in the historic city center. Um, it was um, in the Second World War when Frankfurt was destroyed very much and uh, parts of it haven't been rebuilt. Other parts, the Römerberg has been rebuilt already in the 80s, um, actually. And the other part was um, built with new buildings, with newer buildings, which most of the people thought were quite ugly. Um, about three or four years ago, uh, they would have to be um, reconstructed or refurbished at least. And so um, the government of the city decided to reconstruct the whole district and do, do it as it was before the Second World War. And so it will be reconstructed with 15 original reconstructions after original plans and with original materials and 20 new buildings, um, which are... Mm, done like that they fit into the full picture. For us, it's something very exciting. Um, it should be opened by the end of this year already. The whole quarter will be opened in one. They don't just open parts of it, but they will do a full um, reopening by the end of this year. And for us, it's really exciting because Frankfurt will gain kind of a, of a new phase with that. Frankfurt as well offers a superb selection of hotels. In total, we have about 85 four and five star hotels with over 23,000 beds. Um, to give you an idea about the most important openings from the end of last year until 2018, which is um, by far not all openings. Um, in total, we have, we, we just found out that we, in Frankfurt, there are more hotels opening within the next two years than in Berlin even. Um, so the most exciting openings were um, the Sofitel Frankfurt Opera. It's a five-star superior hotel, which opened just beside the Frankfurt Old Opera House. Um, a big Adina hotel opened, which is an apartment house quite close to the fairgrounds. And then uh, we have a new quarter in Frankfurt um, that is going to be... Mm, to be the hipper quarter now. It's where the European Central Bank is now. 
where, where that is located, that's in the east end of Frankfurt, which was formerly kind of a workers district and nowadays is a district where art galleries go, where younger people go and as well where the European Central Bank is located. And of course, there are a new uh, there is a big number of new hotels opening from budget hotels to four star hotels. It's um, a very great variety of hotels opening over there. And then two products which might be of interest for you um, as we give commission to travel uh, agents and tour operators. That is uh, first of all our Frankfurt card. Um, it's a city card like many other cities offer it um, for one day or for two days, can be for a single person or for up to five persons. It starts with 10 euro 50 for, for one day in one person and it offers free travel on public transportation, various discounts on music museums, shops uh, and restaurants and you can have it for individuals as a print at home version um, but as well you can sell it um, for, for groups and for individuals as a tour operator with a voucher system. If you are interested in that you can always contact me and we would send you some information on how we could work with this on a commission base. And then quite new for starting from tomorrow, we have our Rhine Mine card, which is a real great um, thing because um, it offers uh, as well free public transportation for the whole Rhine Mine area, which is a real discount to if you bought a, a new normal ticket from, for example, going from Frankfurt to um, the Rüde, Rüdesheim Rheingau area or to Wiesbaden or as well. Um, to Fulda, to all areas uh, located in the Rhine Main area. And um, it gives discount to over uh, 40 recreational and cultural establishments as well. Um, and of course, for that, we give commission too. So if you're interested in that information, you will find under the the uh, URL that you find on the website. And then um, if you need further information, you can contact me as well. Yeah, thank you for your attention. If you have any further questions on Frankfurt as a leisure destination, on if you need program ideas, if you need anything else regarding Frankfurt and the surrounding region, really feel free. It would be a pleasure for me to help you anytime. I thank you very much for your attention and um, yeah, thank you for joining us. Bye. Thank you, Yasmin. You're welcome. Now, before we get into the Q&A session, I'd just like to thank all the agents who tuned in today. We hope you're enjoying the webinar, and if you happen to sign in a few minutes late, a recording of this webinar will be available on the Baxter Travel Media YouTube channel by this Thursday, March 2nd. Okay, so the first question that was submitted uh, was actually one that I believe was answered already. So it was from Joanne, who is Condor, who are they owned by? And um, uh, Janet, you answered that nicely when you when you spoke about the Thomas Cook Group. Right. Yes. And let's see. The next person actually submitted a comment. And this was from Sue. She says, flew from Condor with YVR to FRA in a premium economy last May 2016. It was super. Uh, very Good. nice. Thank you, mm -hmm. Sue. And if anyone's having trouble finding the Q&A box, it's in your Zoom toolbar, which is the black toolbar that has the light gray icon. You'll see the Q&A box there that you can click on. And this next one, I believe, is also a comment. Uh, this is from Nadia. She says, to connect Condor from YYZ and using WestJet, the clients have to take care of the check bags from one airline to another even if it's one airline ticket to clear custom. Yes, this is, this is correct. For um, some reason, usually we can do the through check, but um, in this case, WestJet, whatever our interline agreement with them, um, we're, we're not allowed to do it. And actually, um, yeah, it has been a, um, an issue, but at least uh, the only thing I can say is that at least if the passenger knows that the bags are misconnected, that they are getting them. But it unfortunately, you have to kind of 
put in some extra time when when you're doing uh, these connections. We've uh, informed our our colleagues in Germany who do these interline contracts. And um, thank you again, Nadia, for bringing this up. And we'll we'll see if we can get this changed in the future. Th thanks for clarifying, Janet. And we'll allow a couple more minutes for people to submit any questions they may have. You can, and you can submit those into the, either the Q&A box or the chat box. Daniel, there are already a couple of more questions. I'm not sure if you can see them. Oh, I haven't spotted them yet. Uh, oh, yeah, I can see it. Okay. Here we go. Ah, right. Uh, can you show or send Yasmin's contact of the last page of her slide? Uh, yeah, uh, definitely, Nadia. Um, uh, Yasmin, would you like to go ahead and share your screen uh, a second time so that to bring that page up again? Of course, of course. Okay, thank you. Let me go to my last page and then... Um, can you see it? Yeah, I can. Okay. Thanks very much. And then beside, I'm sure you, you will provide the presentation anyway. So, um, yeah, I, definitely. If yeah, anyone who right. wants so, to the fact yeah. can just get the Baxter Travel Media YouTube channel, and this will be online by Thursday. Great. And the next question is from Joanne. She asks, what is the extra cost for premium economy? I believe this is a question for Janet. Right. You know, this is also dy dynamic pricing. So I see Joanne's question and actually then Susan below her. So I think what I'm going to do is give a, a contact that uh, we have our B2B service center here in, in the States for all of North America. So that email address is reservation underscore USA at condor.com. And what I can do is answer them both directly from the screen, right? Uh, yeah, you can if you like. Okay. All right. Then I will put it in writing to them as well. Okay. Into the chat box, you mean? In the Q&A, or is it in the chat box? Well, if you type it into the chat box, then everyone who's, who's online right now can see it. Okay. Yeah. Whoops. Whoa. Oh, yeah, I can see uh, contact for B2B in North America. Yep. But then, ah, and then it, it went away. Uh, maybe I'll hear typing it, it in okay. again. All right. Ah, that's great. I can see it. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, Nadia says, thanks for confirming the info about the bags. Do you see the additional um, questions that came up? Um, maybe you got them a little bit delayed, Daniel. It might be delayed a little bit for me, yeah. So, um, Sayed um, said, thank you for a very educational webinar. Um, Thank you. I, I say also on behalf of all of our partners, we, we're always happy if uh, you learn something new. And as Daniel has said, it will be also available on the YouTube channel. And then the last question is one for me. Um, do other cities in Germany have also have the special travel cards and museum cards? Um, yes, of course, it depends on which city, city you're traveling to. So if you want to, um, um, you can definitely reach out to me and I can provide you with the contacts for them. Um, all the cities that I have introduced to you today, at least the top three from Canada, they do have these special travel cards. Berlin, for example, has the welcome card. Um, they have it all available also for agents. You can definitely reach out and I can provide you with the contact details. No problem. Thanks and very much, Ancha. The, the questions were delayed a little bit on my end by about 60 seconds. If I may just mention for Frankfurt, um, besides the typical Frankfurt card, um, we have uh, a museum, a special museum ticket as well for two days, which allows you to visit all 
museums, um, which are uh, in the comp uh, cooperation of the museum embankment, which is in total about um, 25 museums. Um, you can visit them all with this card within two days. Thank you. And just for the purpose of the YouTube recording, um, I'm aware that the, the chat box won't actually appear in the YouTube recording when that's online in a couple of days. So I'm just going to read out the, uh, uh, the North America contact email that Janet provided in the chat box here. And that was reservation underscore USA at condor.com. That's reservation underscore USA at condor.com. Uh, and it looks like we have another question coming in here. Let's see. Uh, for La for Lufthansa, sometimes for the long haul, we see Lufthansa operated by City Hall or something like this, like International Leg, with LH and then from Europe to the rest. Is City Hall Air, uh, what type of airline and craft is that? Nadia would like to know. Um, this is Antje from the German National Tourist Office. I'm not really sure what you're referring to. I mean, they um, always, of course, have their local carriers as well that can be connection flights. If you can provide me with more details, I can look it up. They have, of course, they're part of Star Alliance, so they have many, many um, yeah, other airlines they re reach out to. So if you want to provide me with more information, maybe we can find that out. Uh, Nadia also asked, um, is this card valid from one to five packs? Yeah, uh, um, there is um, the, the uh, museum card, the museum ticket is just for one person and um, the Frankfurt card you can buy either for one person or for two persons and then again either for one day or for uh, for one person or for up to five persons and then either for one day or for two days. Um, and the, the details to that I could send you if you're interested. I, um, you just pointed your um, email address. I can send you the, the detailed information um, on, the, on the Frankfurt card as well as on the museum ticket if you're interested. That's great. Thanks, Yasmin. Ah, and Carla says, thanks. This was a great presentation. I forgot how much there is to see and do in Frankfurt. In fact, everywhere in Germany. Thank you, Carla. Carla. You all should travel. <laughs> your clients come and visit us in Germany. Absolutely. We had another comment. Okay, thanks, Jasmine, from Nadia. Yeah, I think that was referring to the to the offer that I sent her the information on on the tickets. Mm -hmm. And we still have another few minutes if anyone has any questions that occur to them. Just a reminder to everyone that um, to find the recording on YouTube, just search for either Baxter Travel Media or Baxter Travel Webcast. And the first channel that pops up will be the Baxter Travel Media YouTube channel where all of these webinar recordings are stored. Okay, and I do believe that's it for the questions. Thank you very much, Ancha, Janet, and Yasmin. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Danke schön. And thanks again to the agents who participate in the webinar. Hope you all have a great day. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Auf Wiedersehen. Tschüss.